Oh, hello. Merry Christmas. Caught me a little early. I'm in the wrong liturgical attire. Hey, Ray. Christmas Eve, I'm so excited. Please pray with me. Open our ears, O oh Lord, to hear your word, and our lips to speak it true. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I read a commentary a few weeks ago about our first lesson tonight from Isaiah. The commentary began with a warning. The warning was, a preacher ignores the manger at Christmas for his or her own peril. In other words, the commentator was saying, read on, but people really don't want to hear about the foretelling of the Messiah's coming, about prophecy of the Messiah's coming. They want to hear about the actual event, the real deal. Tonight, actual event of our Savior's birth is at hand. Unto us is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So here we are in this stable, so to speak, because there's no room for us in this borrowed home this glorious home away from home that is Virginia Theological Seminary. Tonight, we are ecstatic to have been so graciously accommodated in here, in this refectory, the feeding trough of this campus. I was delighted to receive permissions from the Bishop of our Diocese of Virginia and from the Dean of this seminary they used this space that I immediately conditioned Farrell Hardigan to make a backdrop that would place us in the stable, at least visually, on this holy night. I won't show it to you right now. You're going to have to wait for the live stream. The stable and its manger is where the action is this night. Did you know that our founding priest, was director of development here at the seminary in 1964 when he founded our Church of the Resurrection. That makes this campus, our city of David, our ancestral home. And here we are, back home, temporarily in the city of our ancestry, while our new church building is being finished. And here we are, the strong recommendation I received to focus this day on the manger and what the manger holds. You know, because you know this oft-told story of Christ Jesus' birth, that the baby's mother wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, the animal's feeding trough. Other translations call swaddling cloths other things. Other versions translate swaddling cloths in other ways. Our new revised standard version, for instance, says the baby was wrapped in bands of cloth. A few paraphrases suggest Jesus was wrapped in rags, suggesting that the adults in the stable that night were either poor or ill-prepared for the baby's birth. Poor the Holy Family might have been However, Mary and Joseph were not ill-prepared to care for the baby. The baby, that's what this night is all about. And the baby, love itself, was lovingly wrapped in bands of cloth, swaddling cloths. People in our time and in our culture just don't know what swaddling cloths are. Upon investigating this term closely this week, I now know that there was an ancient custom, still practiced in some places in the Near East today, of wrapping or swaddling a newborn child after first anointing their skin with pulverized salt and powdered myrtle leaves. In such cultures, swaddling is a rite, a promise to God to raise the child to be truthful and faithful, to be honest and free from crookedness. Swaddling is a validation of the child, a promise of love, a promise to care for him. Swaddling immobilized the baby by wrapping it 
from chin to toes, essentially mummifying the chub and making it straight. Jesus being swaddled, as were most well tinted children of his time, was a promise to God and a promise to the Christ child. It's not the only time in scripture we hear of swaddling an infant. The prophet Ezekiel, for instance, warned people in Jerusalem that they were acting like people foreign to God, like unfaithful people, people who hadn't participated in the birth ritual, which included being swaddled in bands of cloth. So, you might be thinking, Jesus was swaddled at birth, what of it? We knew that. What does it matter? Swaddling means there was worship in the stable that night at that manger. Jesus' parents made a promise to God about the child, and God made a promise to them and through them to all humankind forever. Swaddling usually made a helpless infant even more helpless. It couldn't move, could only cry. However, Christ Jesus managed to draw people to him, even swaddled as he was. There were the shepherds who had been told of Christ's birth by angels, who thus knew they would find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. This child wasn't nearly as helpless as we expect him to have been. The shepherd came as the angels instructed, and they too worshipped there in that stable at that manger. While Mary and Joseph looked on in wonder, that's when this seemingly helpless child swaddled everyone present, wrapping them in his love, wrapping them in his care. Matthew's Gospel tells of other visitors to the stable, visitors from the East. They too worshiped the child, bearing offerings and bowing to the child, as we do tonight. Yes, the stable at this manger is a place of worship. There's one other place in scripture that mentions swaddling, and I just have to tell you. The book of Job, chapter 38, uses the term metaphorically to describe how God in creation lovingly swaddled the whole earth in bands of love and bands of acceptance and validation of us as the children of God. God swaddling the earth during creation occurred while in heaven, scripture says, the morning stars and the sons of God all shouted for joy. And this is how we are, or strive to be tonight, radiating the joy of the coming of the Lord. This baby, born in love for each and every one of us throughout time. This is also how we are tonight, swallowed by God, Wrapped in God's love given to us freely in the form of a child, one who would grow straight in truth and stature and in wisdom and in love, so that all the world would know that God loves us beyond measure and protects us beyond compare. Like the shepherds, let us go to the stable and see this thing that God has brought to pass and worship there. You will find the child in a manger. Swaddled in bands of cloth, wrapped in love, and wrapping you and the whole world, each and every one of us, in love. Hallelujah! Unto us a child is born. Oh, come, let us adore him. I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.